Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a long mover or more mover chess problem where the task is to mate in 270 moves. The chess problem was composed by Yugoslav chess composer Nenad Petrovic and was first published in 1969. But uh, don't get afraid of this huge number because uh, long movers are actually very easy to solve. In almost all the long movers, triangulation tactic is involved and once you can figure out that idea, the rest becomes super easy. Let's see how the solution goes. Uh, first white is playing bishop b1 with which he's putting his opponent in Tsuktsavang. With this move white is first preventing d3 actually and then is placing in Tsuktsavang position. And now black can't move his king because of king a6 followed by b7, b8. Also can't move the knight because of this bishop takes f3 move. And all black can do is to push forward one of his pawns, h4. So all the time white needs to reach this position where it will be black to move and black will be forced to push forward his pawns. And now white is going for the triangulation. Uh, by the way, black can never play a move like king c8 because of this b7 check after which white bishop is suddenly getting freed. That's why black should always make king a8 or king b7 moves in order to keep an eye on a7. And here we go, white king is going for a long journey. Meanwhile, black is just moving around with his king. White is freeing the first rank and then is hurrying towards the f1 square. At this point we first see bishop b1 preventing d3 and only then white is playing king f1 and here we go with the triangulation white is now managing to lose the tempo and now is returning back on a5 square. Meanwhile black is waiting, here we go buddy and soon we will reach the a5 square and once white king steps on a5 now it's black to move and black should push forward one of his pawns once again and again white king is returning back uh, in here there is a tiny nuance which i want to sh show you and then we will jump to move 253 uh, at this point you should never go after the pawn on h4 for example if king g1 then king b7 and you can never uh, win this pawn because black always has this knight g4 defensive resource. If here then knight f2 check. Uh, that's why white is just playing king f2 and is returning back on a5. Here we go. It's black to move and black is pushing forward one of his pawns. Uh, at this point I would like to suggest you to jump to move 253 where black has already gone too far with his pawns and now with king a5 white is putting black in Tsuktsavang. Black should now either move his knight leaving the pawn on f3 unprotected or play d3 or king c8. Uh, in all cases there will be a forced mate in 17 moves. Let's go for king c8 and see how is white going to announce a checkmate. Black is covering the b8 square but there is no way out. First white is munching all the past pawns and then will make use of his b pawn. Black knight dropped and then the b pawn is hurrying towards the eighth rank and here we go. Soon we will announce a checkmate. Check and then after king h5 bishop takes f3 check is coming. King h4 and bishop f2 checkmate. This is move 270 and checkmate is on the board. Uh, by the way, interestingly, I came across this position, which is the mirrored reflection of Nenad Petrovich's chess problem. This one is composed by Lutz Nueklovsky, and modern chess databases can actually spot the bluff uh, very quickly. You know, they are also taking into consideration this type of alternatives, for example, a uh, mirrored reflection. Not a good decision by Mr. Lutz. This trick got revealed very quickly. Uh, well this is it dear chess lovers, hope that you enjoyed this chess problem, feel free to share with your friends as well and as usual we'll see you in my next video. Take care.